The Dowcast, presented by Jack Kelly, an analysis and discussion of the Tao Te Ching. Episode 1, Where All Things Begin. Ah, hello everyone. My name is Jack Kelly. You may know me, you may not know me, but now you're listening to me. And there's one thing you need to know if you're going to listen to anything that I say. And that is, I am a huge fan of the Tao Te Ching. So much so that I am doing this right now. This first episode will act as a bit of an introduction. And then we'll get into actually reading the Tao Te Ching and interpreting it. At least from my perspective. And I say from my perspective because this is a very old book. And the reason why these old books, such as the Tao Te Ching or the Bible or other books, uh, have passed on is because they needed to be condensed a bit. They needed to, to include everything that is needed to be said, everything that's needed to be presented, but in a form that is, that is easy to, to transcribe, to continue on and propagate. So it ends up making the language pretty dense or making it very poetic and it's very beautiful i i wish i i wish i uh, studied more mandarin in my day but even then i feel as if the old chinese in which the Tao Te jing was written is comparable to very very old shakespearean or even more shakespearean than shakespearean english and well i i don't want to subject myself to that so instead i have Uh, Three different translations slash interpretations of the Tao Te Ching, and I will be reading from them. The main piece that I'll read from is from Stephen Mitchell's interpretation of the Tao Te Ching. It was the first one that I had ever listened to, or not listened to, ever read, I guess. Uh, Listened to it within my heart, maybe. Yes, uh, save myself there with some poetry, I guess. And so it's the one that is is most fresh in my mind that I'll be um, interpreting from. But if there's ever any major conflict between the interpretations that I have, then I'll bring that up in these episodes when I do the interpretation of each chapter. And through each chapter we shall go, you and I, the listener and me. We will take an odyssey through each of these chapters and interpret them. At least, I will interpret them. So if you feel as if there's something that I'm missing, or something that I'm getting so gravely wrong, then comment about it. Message me about it. Or maybe we could do an intermittent episode where I can invite you on and we can discuss it further. Because that is something that I want to inspire in people. To discuss these old books, especially the Tao Te Ching. Because... (laughs) I may be a little biased here, but it's honestly one of the most important books of my life. So, uh, without further ado, let's begin actually talking about the book. I will go chapter by chapter, like I said before. And we're going to begin with chapter one. from, And I'll be reading from the Stephen Mitchell version. Here we go. I'm getting a. I'm getting all nervous. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The unnameable is the eternally real. Naming is the origin of all particular things. Free from desire, you realize the mystery. Caught in desire, you see only the manifestations. Yet mystery and manifestations arise from the same source. This source is called darkness. Darkness within darkness, the gateway to all understanding. As with all chapters of the Tao, this is a doozy, and I'll go through it paragraph by paragraph, at least how it's uh, oriented in the Stephen Mitchell version. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao, uh, because Tao, meaning the way, The way that can be told is not the eternal way, because if you can put it into words, you're essentially making it mortal in a way. You're making it, you're putting it into human language rather than having it 
not exist in language. Because if it's something eternal, then by definition, it, it can't be easily described. I mean, as you can see, I'm having very much trouble here describing it effectively. And I'm only just talking about it, at least the, the language manifestation of it. You have to consider the fact that humans are not eternal, that we will eventually die. We came from nothingness, and we will go into nothingness eventually. So this nothingness, this great nothingness, the, the darkness, as it's described in the Stephen Mitchell version, in other translations it's referred to as the void. Um, this, this nothingness is... <laughs> Can you really describe something that is that is not? You know, we only know being. It's very difficult to describe non-being. Imagine trying to explain what it's like to not be alive, or to be dead, to be before birth and after death. It's not possible. That's why Lao Tzu says that it's not the eternal Tao. That the name that can be named is not the eternal name. Because if you put it into human language, you're putting it into something that is finite, that came from nothing and will go to nothing. Yet what is eternal is nothing, but at the same time is. You're going to be seeing a lot of these paradoxes, rather, you'll be hearing them from me. These paradoxes are core to, to Taoism, I guess. Uh, you'll see plenty upon plenty of them, and as we go through each one, I'll, I'll do my best to unravel them and explain them. But I am not perfect. I am not a great scholar. I am essentially a child. The unnameable is the eternally real. Naming is the origin of all particular things. This is a concept that's uh, expanded on in the writings of Zhuangzi, who was a, a Taoist philosopher uh, long after the days of Lao Tzu about uh, giving names to things and, and labeling them. And here Lao Tzu says the unnameable is the eternally real. The things you can't describe are things that will always exist. Um, you know, the universe, for example, the fabric of the cosmos, it's, it's hard for us to wrap our heads around them and, and def define every single particle, but they exist. And we know they exist because we exist. And this everything here exists. So the things we can't name are the only things that we know for sure cannot change, that they're eternally real. And naming is the origin of all particular things because we can categorize th things, objects, when we give them a name. And that's exactly a, an idea that's, uh, that's given in the Bible, in Genesis, where it is up to humans to give names to all the animals and creatures and the things in the Garden of Eden. That it is us who are essentially having godlike powers and naming things and giving them giving them labels. Free from desire, you realize the mystery. Caught in desire, you see only the manifestations. This is another theme here with desire that uh, is often uh, included in Buddhism about how desire should be minimized or even done away with because all it does is get in the way of wisdom I suppose and that is because desire is inherently involved with identifying things that be things that are and essentially or rather by definition means that they are finite so when you desire for something, like say, I desire for food, that food will eventually no longer be, I guess. Uh, even if I were to not desire for it, it eventually would become something else. It would change into something else. Um, so when you have this desire, you only see the manifestations of the profound mystery. The mystery that uh, originates from the darkness, from the void, from nothingness that gave birth to all things. So when you see the manifestations of this, it's because you're caught in desire. You, you want things, so you only see things. But when you don't have this desire, you can realize where all of this is coming from. And that is nothing, from, or rather from pure chaos, I suppose from just from no order 
and it's names that give structure, labels that will provide a scaffolding, a, a skeleton for all of your ideas and concepts of the world to fit these manifestations in and creating order from that. In many translations, the darkness um, or the Tao or the void is described as the originator of heaven and earth and it is the mother of all things. And so that's one fault that I find with the Stephen Mitchell version is it can sometimes omit these, these, beautiful, these beautiful terms, I suppose. One such omission of beauty is from a, a James Legge, or James Lege, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it, from his translation of the Tao Te Ching. It is, uh, under these two aspects, it is really the same. But as all development takes place, it receives the different names. Together we call them the mystery. Where the mystery is the deepest, is the gate of all that is subtle and wonderful. And if the mystery is to describe what the darkness is, and to describe the origins of things, then in the Stephen Mitchell version, darkness within darkness, being the gateway to all understanding, is a different way to put it, but I honestly prefer where the mystery is the deepest, is the gate of all that is subtle and wonderful. Because that is truly what, what I think is the most beautiful about the Tao, is all that is subtle and wonderful. Things that are simple, things that will make sense to you when you truly get your head around it and it seems like you already knew something to be true because it's just so subtle and persists and everything it's eternal in a way and is wonderful for that reason and perhaps there's a there's a spiritual argument that we are all capable of knowing certain eternal truths but to avoid that spiritual interpretation i personally am a man of science particularly neuroscience and so it makes me consider if perhaps there's something innate in our uh in the structure of our brains and the way we think the way we view the world that lends itself to have these constant principles to have these constant ideas or constant uh, drives in us something that we can't really describe ourselves but when we hear it it makes sense to us that's honestly what I'm most fascinated by is when I hear these things I'm also a fan of of, of Jordan Peterson and I hope that's not a, a, a controversial um, admiration but when he writes and when he talks and when he describes certain aspects of the human psychology it makes sense uh, a lot of people say it sounds like you're telling me something that i already know but i just never knew how to describe before and that's something that is most evident in the Tao, in my opinion when i first read it 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 was a breath of fresh air it made me really feel that I, I was I knew something like I was more wise than I was because this wise man was writing writing things and I felt well <laughs> now that you say it it seems very obvious and perhaps this might be one of the the least obvious chapters discussing the source of all things in the world and what is eternal the source of all things the the way the mystery the darkness but eventually, later on, there will be some chapters that are favorites of mine and very easy to interpret. But I like, I like this chapter. It's a very nice way to start off. And I hope that you guys enjoyed it too and that you think about it some more. Um, I know I definitely will, and if I ever listen back on this, I will realize what it was that I was missing here or... A new, if I knew a new way to explain myself and not stutter around like an inarticulate fool. But if I were to wait until I was wiser, then I would just wait until I died. Because with every day, you become more wise. So, that's some wisdom from a young child. And I hope you guys enjoyed this.
I'm going to be doing many more of these, and I hope that you guys are excited for them. I hope that they help spark your interest in the DAO, or, um, say, if you need to read the DAO for school, like I had originally, this might help you give something to something extra for when you want to discuss it with other people, or discuss it with yourself, even. I hope you enjoyed this. What's that, the third time I'm saying this? But I hope you've enjoyed it, and you got something out of it. Because that's my ultimate goal. And maybe you didn't get anything out of it. Maybe you really want more from me. And if that's the case, then I'd love to discuss with you. I'd love to get you on here and talk about this. I want you guys to be engaged in discussing and thinking about this, because I'm just one person, thinking this over with myself. With all of our combined minds put to this effort, we could understand this a lot more, and understand our own lives, and how to live them best. So, that's all you're going to get from me. You have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll talk to you again soon.